Welcome back again, Eric. Do that, but better. And I'm Zach. Eric, how have you been? Doing well. You know, we all had the flu for a week. So <laughs> awesome. after that week, you're feeling good when you're not all throwing <laughs> up. <laughs> That's great. I love that you've got the uh, Ted Lasso tribute behind you. The Believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> have you watched it at all <laughs> yeah i got I a new laptop well. yeah and so it got apple tv for free for like whatever it is two or three months uh -huh. and i was like we have to watch ted lasso before the free apple tv is done <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is pretty good the the uh natalie and the kids um they i think they binge watch it so i only caught a few but they're, they're pretty awesome. <laughs> yep. So today talking a little bit about like, we're staying on our theme of outside the box. And so today we're talking a little bit about, um, fitness outside of the box. So most people are, uh, very familiar with, Hey, I'm going to exercise inside the gym. I'm going to go do, do my time, but this often leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, and actually, it, it might even get boring. You're like, all right, why? Oh, yeah, I have to exercise. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, because I don't do anything else. And in, I'll tell you what, just exercising is fantastic. But it's like, why are we exercising? And Eric, what what would you say are your your favorite activities outside the gym? Um, anything with a ball. So mm -hmm. I love to just like, <clears throat> even some sometimes on my like sprint days, just take a soccer ball out to a field and do almost like Tabata sprints, but with the soccer ball where you're just dribbling, kicking, um, disc golf is a, a great one for me. I love, there are a couple courses around us where it, it's essentially a hike and you're throwing discs. Uh, you got great yeah. views, <laughs> you know, it's just right. super fun. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I, I usually oh, don't, do uh, you know, so it's, it's funny. I feel like it gets harder and harder to find like, you know, whether it's a hobby or anything like that. So I think that most of, most of my stuff turns into, uh, can I play something with the kids and, mm -hmm. you know, so shooting around in the, in the driveway or, you know, playing some baseball or anything like that. And so it's it, the, the intensity, <laughs> um, and things like that have all, totally gone, um, gone down from what I liked to do. Cause it, yeah, it was, you know, playing rugby and, uh, and playing, you know, men's basketball on the weekends or, uh, or even playing on a softball team. But yeah, it's, it's turned more into just doing all these, these other things, uh, that are just active. And actually mm -hmm. even, I would say, I really love that my kids think that I'm like the strongest person in the world. So it's like, <laughs> Hey, can, can you carry this? Yeah. <laughs> you know, can you carry us all up to bed at the same time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do double, double piggyback rides up the stairs. <laughs> yes. So I haven't done it in a while. And actually I'm, I'm very curious to try because Nancy and Maddie are getting pretty darn big. Like their feet are probably going to drag, but we have done the, the four kids all, all stacked up. And we, we've done it multiple times. Like, so we can, it's like, what is it? Milo, uh, yeah. who, who picked up the yeah. bull. It's like, just keep, keep doing it. And, uh, you'll forever be stronger. <laughs> yeah. That's what Eloise has been practicing that with Conlin. Oh yeah. She wants to pick him up. And I've yeah. said like, if you pick him up every day, carry him like across the room, <laughs> you're going to get stronger. <laughs> and you're only allowed one drop. Yep. <laughs> On the carpet. <laughs> But yeah, you know, so, something else that comes to mind is just like work. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like actually our neighbor came over with his snowblower the one day. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm going to deadlift right after this. So like I'll shovel my driveway. Right. <laughs> Thanks though. But like they need their driveway done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like shoveling, shoveling rock. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds weird, but yeah. When people need help with some of that stuff, I'm like, Pick me because 
yeah, like that is sort of your your outside the box fitness of you know applying that stuff where it where it's actually helpful. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that most people usually get this idea that fitness is a look. It's six pack abs. It's uh, I don't know wearing a bikini. It's all of these things in our head, but you know, CrossFit's definition and like one of the big things that CrossFit did was they said that, Hey, fitness doesn't really have a definition or it's very ambiguous. It's like, Oh, being fit. It's like, well, what the heck does that even mean? And so yeah. when Greg Glassman came up with his definition of fitness, um, it, it took a totally different turn on why we're doing what we're doing in the gym. And so with, uh, with what is fitness, CrossFit's definition is increased work capacity across broad time and modal domains. And so what, what that means is I can do more work in any situation, right? So whether it's um, in a short sprint, if it's an endurance race, so running a 5K, running a marathon, um, can I increase my work capacity? Like, did I get stronger? Am I able... Um, do I have more flexibility, right, um, mm -hmm. to, to get into this position? And so what they did that in their model of fitness, they have the 10 general physical skills of an athlete. And we have endurance, stamina, speed, power, strength, coordination, agility, balance, flexibility, and accuracy. And the, the idea of CrossFit is to increase your work capacity in these things. So let's just say flexibility is like, can I squat deeper? Uh, can I put my hands over my head? And now we're training so that we can increase all these so that we're, we're able to go and do life. Mm -hmm. right? and, and I might even argue, this is a weird sort of tangent, but mm -hmm. squat deeper, can you step higher? Ooh, all right. I wonder like, <clears throat> you don't see that tested very much, but like how high of a box can you step up onto? Yeah. I'm just thinking. So I was thinking about like the fitness out of the box and like moving <laughs> when right. you're carrying boxes and like going up and down stairs or, um, hiking, like, can yeah. you make it up? If, if, a, if it's a two foot step, like you just, you have to be able to do it. Yeah. Or are you gonna have to like sit on it and turn and step up? Like these are just all kinds of, I feel like those situations test you in ways that you might not think about in the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And actually, well, when you were saying the high step up and hiking, think about rock climbing. Yeah. Right? So yep. get, getting your foot into this position way up here and then dragging yourself up into it. And mm -hmm. just thinking about a, a bunch of people are climbing at the gym recently, but, but yeah, like now I'm taking that fitness and using it outside. And really mm -hmm. this is, this is the pinnacle of our hierarchy for the development of an athlete. So um, with, with CrossFit, it, it talks about if I want to develop and when, when I say athlete, I, I, I talk about athlete as an athlete in life. So um, what can I do and how well can I function in everything that I'm doing? And mm -hmm. if like, so number one is nutrition. It's like, I need fuel so that I can work. Right. And that's going to be the base of our pyramid. Then we move up into metabolic conditioning. So think of this as like your cardio. Can I do work for a long time? Can my heart and lungs work well? And then we move into gymnastics. Can I move my body? And this is where you're going to see not only just, um, uh, general body, body strength and coordination, but you're also going to see a lot of flexibility. And then we move into weightlifting, throwing, things like that. And then we move into sport. And although sport, you know, yes, it can be basketball. It can be playing tennis, but it, it's also, what do I need to do? And now when the kids say, Hey, can you go across the monkey bars? It's like, yeah, because my gymnastics is, is rock solid. I can control my body. I can hang from a bar and now I'm able to play or 
you're playing uh what is it called like fish out of water <laughs> or uh you know on, on the jungle gym and yep. where hey i need to jump and get my foot way up on this thing so i can climb up when when they're yelling fish out of water yep you know like balancing on the outside of the bridge <laughs> railing instead on the inside like <laughs> yeah well and and i think that when when you look at these the the 10 physical skills it's very easy to look at I usually look at strength and endurance. I think that those are the two places that people go to when they're thinking about fitness. And, mm -hmm. and they are both very important, but all these other things are going to make you better at these, right? So, um, you know, if I, if I have coordination, I'm going to be able to lift better right? Because I'm able to control my joints in combination when I need to, so that the, we're moving the bar more efficiently, or I'm even just able to um, brace better because I can, I can move my hip without moving my, my, my trunk. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And that stuff, I feel like that's <clears throat> sort of the application where you, you could be or let's say you see plenty of the 24 hour fitness back and by chest and try guys who mm -hmm. are probably super muscular. Maybe they're really strong. Um, but if you aren't actually testing some of these other things, like mm -hmm. the coordination and agility and balance, then like you get them on a basketball court or whatever it is. And you're like, Oh my gosh, what is happening? And that's sort of, you know, we've talked in the past about the natural athlete. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it is, you know, when you, when you see that person, it's, it's that they have a foundation of all of these things, right? Like it is a level foundation. And so whatever, whatever you throw at them, they can adjust and adapt and pick it up quickly. And that's what we're hoping that everyone can do so that whatever, whatever situation you're put in, you're able to excel <laughs> quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can always, <clears throat> yeah. You know, if you are lacking at one of these, you know, and especially in CrossFit, it, it's going to show up. And actually what, what you'll see is, um, whether it's cherry picking or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you, you start to get that, I, I'm, I'm going to go light for this, or I'm, I'm going to do, you know, this other thing, yeah. right? Because this is where I, I have the biggest problem and this will show up as we get older. And, uh, this is really what we're, we're fighting against is, um, getting into a situation where, um, as I get older, I can't do this thing. You know, I have had, you know, multiple people that are like, I want you, or I want to be able to walk up the stairs without, um, getting out of breath. Right. And, you know, it, it seems, it seems so simple, but if all that I do is walk on a treadmill, Right. And I never, like, like you said, take that step up. Right. Yeah. If, if my strength is, is low and now I have to, I have to lift my weight on one leg. It's like, oh my gosh, that really took a lot out of me. But if I'm doing step ups, if I'm doing, um, if I'm doing heavy back squats, if I'm, uh, you know, if, if my legs are just stronger, then all these, all these things become easier. And I think the, the, the big neglected pieces are often um, like flexibility and, and balance. You know, actually, I, I remember on CrossFit.com, people were outraged that the workout of the day was practice slips for 20 minutes. And <laughs> which is it's basically, or, or yes, scale. Yeah. Actually, they're, they're, yeah, there's scales and slips. And so doing that. That was and, so funny. <laughs> but he, here's the thing. There's a lot of people that can't do it. Yep. And it's like, oh man, guess what? We, we teach uh, like kindergartners that, you know, like that's like, that's basic movement. That's warm up. That's, you know, 
Um, and mm -hmm. that's a game. And we lose that because we go, hey, I'm going to go sit on this machine. Um, you know, I'm, I'm worried about getting hurt when I work out or whatever. So it's like, I'm going to use this machine. But it's like, hey, what if we are moving so that we can move out there? Mm -hmm. And yeah, y you should be able to stand on one leg because when we walk, <laughs> we're going to do a lot of it. Now carry something. And now this goes back to that hierarchy. It's like gymnastics. How, how good am I at gymnastics? And even in CrossFit, you know, although people who have been doing CrossFit for a while are probably a little bit higher than most normal people um, in their gymnastic skills, our gymnastic skills are very subpar when it comes to a gymnast. Yeah. And not just a gymnast, a seven-year-old gymnast. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, like our hardest things are things that they, you know, it's just a muscle up. That is how you mount the rings. That's, that's not a skill. That's like, Zero here points. you go. Let's get started. <laughs> right. <Yep. laughs> and we're, and we're like, muscle up, <laughs> you know, and, and it is a huge accomplishment, but uh, it's also like, we're, we're very much at a, uh, at a, at a novice level here. Actually, mm -hmm. we've just, we, we've recently been doing um, uh, pike ups. So sitting on the floor, feet together and raising the feet up. And I'll tell you what, they're a lot <laughs> harder than most people think. Oh yeah. Uh, you were talking about walking and mm -hmm. I had someone talk to me recently about that, about feeling unsteady on their feet and mm -hmm. like, how do I feel more, more steady? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I said was like, you just, you need to grab, fill up your backpack with books and walk to the corner and back. Just carry it in front of you, carry it in one hand, switch hands on your shoulder. Like, because <clears throat> I think he, an issue with this of like fitness outside the box mm -hmm. is that you can go pretty much your entire life without really having to be tested, mm -hmm. you know, like, you can get by without lifting anything more than like probably 30 pounds for the most part. Like your yep. luggage has wheels on it. <laughs> right. You know, you can take one grocery bag at a time and you never actually have to be tested. And the proof of this is how weak so many people are. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know people personally who I worry about because I'm like in like 10 or 15 years, you know, like, you can look at someone's upper body at their arms <clears throat> and be like, this person has not lifted anything with any significant weight for a very long time. Yeah. And in the next 10 or 15 years, like your, your muscle mass is going to start to decrease and you do not have any to lose. And so right. then I'm like, you, once you get older, like you are not going to be able to do anything. Right. And that is, <clears throat> I feel like it's the curse of modern, modern life that it's so easy that you kind of screw yourself for later. <laughs> right. And so I, I feel like now is the time where, you know, as people start to hit that age of like 50, 60, they start to realize, oh, I'm like totally losing my ability to do anything. Mm -hmm. How do I get this back? And this is it is like start challenging yourself now with these things and not just in the gym, like you were saying, like not just on a machine because you need to exercise, but think about those things of like, I want to feel steady on my feet. I want to be able to, you know, carry more than one grocery bag. <laughs> I want to be able right. to pick up my grandkids and swing them over my head. Okay. What does that look like? Like, how do you, how do you make your exercise look like that? instead of like exercise looks like exercise and life looks totally different. Yeah. Actually, do you remember that CrossFit commercial? Was it a CrossFit commercial where it was, it was like a grandpa and he like all of a sudden went out into the shed and he's got this big old kettlebell and he's holding <laughs> it and everyone's just looking at him weird and he's doing it like every day. And then his, uh, his, his family comes, comes over for Christmas and he goes and picks up his grandkid and mm -hmm. it's like, dang i mean yeah if you weren't crying when you saw that you're, you're not even alive 
but <laughs> you know, and it, it does get that important, right? And it might not seem like it right now because you haven't hit something that you can't do. And I'll tell you what, uh, when I got into CrossFit, that, that was sort of where I was sitting. I, I was still active and there wasn't really uh, that much that I couldn't do. But one, one thing that really hit me at one point was when we went on our uh, hiking trip and there was that cave. And so we're out in the back country and we're going into this cave and it was really tight and you, and you went, it was almost like you went down and then up and I was going in and I've never been claustrophobic before, but I'm going in and your hands are like this. And, uh, and you know, I was, I was 225 pounds. So like I was, uh, I was not small and especially I'm five, nine and I like, and I, I got really nervous about going in. I was like, I'm going to get stuck in here. And number one, there's already people in there and they, they can't get out <laughs> if, if I'm stuck in here. <laughs> and I was like, we're, we're two days in on a hike. You know, I don't, we don't even know where we're at really. And, yeah. and I sat out of there and that was like, that was probably like the first time that I ever felt like I couldn't do something. And it was like, I need to, I need to do something. And because like the fitness that I had and I, w I was working out like, so I was working out um, multiple times a week. I was playing rugby at the time. Uh, I was a fireman. You know, it, there was like all these things that I still had work capacity, but there was, there was a chink in my armor. Is that the right word? Chink. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Uh, I, I've never <laughs> known. I've never seen it written. <laughs> But like, and, and that, that's the biggest thing is that you fail at the margins of your experience. And so if we can put ourselves through the most amount of things that, uh, that will challenge us when life comes up, we're able to do it. And especially when we're using functional movements, we're lifting things, we're standing up, we're sitting down, we're throwing things, we're uh, pulling ourselves up, we're running and jumping and playing. Now, this is going to transfer into life because I'm doing real work right? As opposed to I'm training a muscle, mm -hmm. right? It's like, no, I'm training my body to do work in all these uh, different fashions. Yep. And in your defense, that was extremely tight. That cave. Doesn't matter. That, that I was, was like, that was life changing. That was, I think I was probably, I don't know, 150 pounds at that point. Right. And I'm pretty sure that the top of that scraped my back as I was crawling flat on my belly. <laughs> yeah. It was a very tight cave. <laughs> well, yeah, I was about to, I was about to squeeze in there like, like a mutant trumpet. And like, it's like, <laughs> Nope, not going, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it happened because th that was, that was the first time, you know, and I, I'll have to say that even at that time, actually, even on that, on that trip, you know, I, I felt like I could do anything. And I remember like, that was the first time I ever um, got cramped up from, from hiking or doing anything. And it was like, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm not as fit as I thought I was. Mm -hmm. And remember, like we're talking about fitness yet. Yeah, I was, I was strong. I, like if, if you went into the gym, you'd be like, oh wow, they can, they can do a lot of stuff. And, you know, I was playing sports and I like to think that I could have played sports just fine, but there was a lot limiting me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I would have never figured it out if I wasn't out trying things, going, do it, go do things and, um, and challenge yourself a little bit so that you can find where do I still need a little bit of work? Mm -hmm. Man, that's what's been on my mind a ton recently is just like injury, especially knee injuries, <clears throat> because they're so common. And is it Odell Beckham? What? Because it Odell Beckham? Before that, actually. So Cameron <laughs> just exploded his knee a hmm. month or two ago, and it was exactly the same. He had just described it to me that day hmm. on Sunday. He was like, yeah, it was my first game playing indoor soccer again. He was on a breakaway, and the ball got behind him a little bit, and he stepped to stop. And he said it just like he heard 
heard it go. Yeah. And then that night, watching the game, Odell Beckham, same thing. He's running one way, tries to stop, and you see it pop. And I was like, hey, Cam, he just did exactly what you did. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, like, if you are not actually testing that stuff, like, if you are not putting in the work to develop your joints and keep them healthy and doing that stuff, that's going to happen. Yeah. Because at some point, you're just going to step and turn or whatever, and it's going to go. That's like, <clears throat> that's on my mind right now is like keeping my joints healthy and bulletproof. Yeah. Strength through full range of motion. And, you know, taking yep. some time in reps when, when you're moving and, uh, and even doing lateral movement, you know, um, actually I was just listening to Chris Henshaw talk about when he was a, uh, when he was an Ironman triathlete, he, you know, he's one of the best in the world at Ironmans and he did something. I, I think it was, he was, he was just getting into CrossFit and they, they were doing something. And he said, I couldn't move left to right. He was really good at going straight, but mm-hmm. lateral movement was like a no go. And he did that because or like, or that happened, I guess you could say, because he was so specialized in this one thing. And so he had great work capacity if he's running, biking and rowing or no running, biking and uh, swimming. But in anything else, he was seriously lacking. You know, he was mm-hmm. lacking in strength and yeah, for longevity, we, we want to have that strength throughout everything and even moving uh, so that we um, we don't have problems as we get older. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But really, I mean, so now with fitness, all right. So yeah, we've got work capacity. But if we are if we are building fitness like we're talking about, so increased work capacity across broad time and modal domains, we're increasing these these ten general physical skills what we're doing is actually creating health. So yes, I'm going to be able to do all these things and I'm going to be able to work. I'll be able to be independent. But if I'm increasing my pull-ups, if I'm increasing my mile time, if I'm increasing my strength, if I'm increasing my agility all at the same time, I can assure you that my body, my, my body fat percentage is probably lower. My muscle mass is, is um, higher. My resting heart rate is better. My blood pressure, my triglycerides, because if they're all going up now, if, if I'm just increasing one, just like Chris Henshaw, right? He had great endurance, great stamina, right? But he was lacking in all these others, right? Um, you might not have all of that. Mm-hmm. But if, if, I got, if I got better pull-ups, my strength to weight ratio is better, right? So um, I probably have less body fat, which is fantastic, right? Um, if my endurance is better, I probably have a better resting heart rate um, and so on. So we're not just building fitness. We're building long-term health, which is also going to increase our work capacity. And I really feel that when you do hard things, you know, you, yes, it shows that you're um, stronger, like whether it's mentally or physically, but it also builds a lot of confidence. And this is huge because now I don't have to shy away from things. You go, I can do this. It's going to be hard. I've done hard stuff. And if I've trained hard in the gym, then everything else is like, all right, that wasn't so bad. And we're not just building strength and confidence. We're building that long-term health, independence. And this is really what it is to be an athlete in life. Yep. And I feel like (laughs) it becomes a little bit of a mindset where I know you and I uh, might seek out the more difficult path (laughs) of like, yeah, we could get a bobcat to move all of this rock, (laughs) but I got a shovel and wheelbarrow. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right 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 before like our winter really started um we had a tree that that has been um dropping branches and knocking down our power lines um often and so there was a tree guy 
across the street and we're like, hey, can you chop this down? Just drop it. I'll cut it up. And so, and it's a lot of tree. And he's like, all right, you're going to have some fun with that. And I was like, yeah. And it snowed. I've got a ton of wood that we are going to be chopping. <laughs> it, it like takes up our whole, our whole yard. <laughs> but yep. Yeah. You know, doing, doing that stuff, it lets you know that I can. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that that is so important. Yeah. Yeah. Like there are a lot of conveniences that you can use and they have their place, but um, like I said, modern life is so easy that seeking out some of those challenges, uh, you know, you said, uh, was it? You fail at the margin of your experience. Mm-hmm. Like it just gives you more experience right? and you know, more, more edges to test so that you can get better. And I'll tell you what, you know, we, we talked about the work capacity and how, um, you know, most people think of fitness as a look. And so it, although fitness is, is not necessarily a look, there are correlatives, right? Mm -hmm. So lot, you can have somebody who has six pack abs and all this kind of stuff and has absolutely no work capacity and is possibly not even healthy. You can also have somebody who doesn't have six pack abs and has tons of work capacity and is very healthy, but you'll also see a lot of crossover between the two. So somebody who has really great work capacity across time and modal domains is probably going to have, you know, so if they have more muscle mass, less body fat, they're able to do work Their um, their body composition probably is going to be more like what people are looking for also. So it, it's not that, Hey, it doesn't matter at all. Well, it, it doesn't necessarily matter, but it, it is, it is also the way to, um, to get those, those goals also, if that's your fitness goal. Yeah. So there you go. Get, get out and be fit. You know, do, do the things that you love. Find what are the things that I really want to, what I want to be able to do and go test that so that when you are in the gym, you are, you are, you are training for a purpose, you know, and remember that we're trying to train against a, a, or a, across all of these general, these physical skills and not just one or the other, just because we're really good at them. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, get fit, get outside the box and go have fun in life. Be an athlete. Cool. Good. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We're done. All right. We will see you guys next week. And speaking of athlete, we got the CrossFit open coming up. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the CrossFit open. Eric, do you know how many years you've, you've been in it? Um, mm, yeah, I not, I have is, to look, this is my 10th, 10th year and I'm, and I'm aging up. I'm excited. 40, <laughs> 40 to 45. So. Man, there was a point where, when they added the age groups and I thought, mm-hmm. oh, nice. <clears throat> All these games athletes, they'll be like beat up. And so I was like, I'm training for the age group. Yeah. And now all the same people are still just smashing the age they're, groups. <laughs> they're still good. <laughs> yep. Not the way I planned it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys. Uh, that's it for Do That But Better. We will see you next week at 12 o'clock. All right. See you later.